Welcome back to the next lesson. Now we will take a look how we can add the boat that we just simulated as a collision object in our main flip simulation. So let's take a look. We have cached out the points that will move our boat with the transform pieces sop you can see here. And now it moves accordingly to our low res flip simulation. So the next step is to take a look in here the guided ocean layer sim where will happen our high res flip simulation. And let's just take a look at the collision here. So here's our boat static object. At the moment it wouldn't move, we have to activate the use deforming geometry. But in the end we will use another method to let our boat move with a good collision geometry. But let's take a look here first. Okay, so here you can see if you activate the collision guide geometry, you can see how our boat at the moment is represented, which won't be enough. I mean you can increase the uniform division size here but in the end it's not what we're looking for because it's pretty slow what we are going to use is a collision source as a VDB. Let's display the geometry here again and let's take a look here on our flip object there on the guides tab you can visualize several things for example you can see a preview of the surface you can see the particles or you can see the collision and that's what interesting for now so tick here on collision and we need to jump to the second frame to see the result. So jump to the second frame. And now you will see the actual collision representation which the flip object is generating. So basically you always have to look at this representation. The other one could be looking correct here, the blue one, but it's still not colliding properly. So always take a look at this collision representation here on the guiding visualization of your flip object. The reason why this looks so odd here is that we have a particle separation and this also influences our collision. So let's jump back to reset and again to frame 2 to see now it should look better. Yeah, you can already see that here are more details now. I mean this problem will be gone later on but still it's not enough resolution here. So let's switch to the VDB method. Okay, jump back and perhaps you already know it, up here in the shelf on the collisions tab there's a deforming object shelf button which is really useful. It will set up a few connections for us which will save time. So first go inside here the guided ocean layer sim and just delete the three nodes here. Okay, that's fine, jump back up and make sure that here it's, uh, it's ticked on as guided ocean layer sim and not on our boat sim. And select your boat and hit the deforming object button. Okay, now let's take a look what happened. In here we have our transform pieces and these nodes are now added by the shelf button. So we have a collision source and this source will make sure that everything is fine with our collision. It will calculate again the velocity, I mean we already have the velocity, but in some cases if you would just have used the transform source there wouldn't be any velocity on the points. So this collision source makes sure that the velocity gets calculated properly and it will also generate a collision volume which will be outputted here in the second one. So let's take a look at like this at the moment our collision is looking like. Also pretty rough but here you can set the voxel size. At the moment it's just linked to our dotnet but we will change this later on. Okay so let's take a look what happened inside the dotnet. In here press the L button to lay out our nodes. So again we have a static object but there are some differences. The use deforming geometry is already ticked on and it will re-evaluate the SOPs uh, in the subframes to interpolate the geometry. That makes sure that also on a sub-step for example because a flip simulation by default uses two sub-steps and between these two frames there will be also correct geometry for the collision. So that's also pretty nice and if you move down here on the collision step you will see that here we have a proxy volume and this is actually a link to the VDB which gets generated in a collision source. And this here is the value which is linked to the voxel resolution of our collision source. So let's display the collision guide here again and if we lower this value to 0.15 for example you will see immediately that now the collision representation here is much finer. And one more thing is here to take a look on our flip object. There we have the particle separation. I already mentioned that this also influences the collision resolution. So the thing is if we're going to lower this value here more to get a more detailed flip simulation for example to 0.06 
then our collision separation will also be much higher and perhaps it's even too high. In my R&D tests I saw that if we have a really high collision separation, so our high res collision object, then the whole simulation will be slow and there's no advantage because at some point you don't need a more detailed collision. So on our flip object here is another handy option which is a collision separation. Here you can set it separately from the particle separation. So we can increase the details for our particles as high as we want but we will keep a reasonable collision separation. So let's take it on here and now this will be the value which we want to have linked to our voxel resolution of the VDB generation. So do a right click here, copy parameter, let's take a look here on our boat and link it here to the division size. So paste relative reference. Now it will always match the resolution we set here. I think 0.15 is a pretty good value. At the moment it's matching, but later on we will decrease this value here to get more detail to 0.06, then the volume of our collision object would be way too high, which will slow down the simulation. So always keep in mind to use a reasonable collision separation and to make sure that you check your collision, which is actually used by the solver, with the guides, visualization and the collision tag here. So display the particles again, let's jump to frame 2 and we will take a look at our collision. Okay, now it's more detailed but you can see we have some more issues here because at the moment our whole boat is a collision and that's not necessary. That will also slow down the simulation with all the fine details here. We don't need them in our collision volume, we will just use the hull of our boat here. So jump back, go one level up and let's take a look inside our boat here to do some adjustments. Bring it down to get some space before we fed it into the collision source, set the display flag here and let's isolate the hull of our boat. So basically we can just use what we already got here, so just connect this one here. For the rendering we will duplicate this later on. But so now we have just the hull, what we are looking for, that's fine. Just keep it clean here, okay. Pretty good, but we are going to do some more adjustments. Because if you take a look here in the collision source and display the volume, you will see that here we have some issues. Because the, the side here of our boat is pretty thin and that's a problem for the VDB generation even if it's a curved surface. So better than just increasing the collision resolution higher and higher is to modify our collision object a bit so it won't slow down the whole simulation. Okay, so now we have our object as a packed object, so we cannot edit the uh, separate uh, faces here or primitives, so just do a convert node, drop it down, and now you can select uh, the individual primitives here. So what we are looking for is all these primitives here to extrude it in, so to have a big thicker um, sidewall of our boat. So. Just make sure that you have area select visible geometry only activated. So you won't, if you do it like this, you won't just have selected the front faces. Okay, let's just select the whole side wall here. Okay. Just make sure to get the right faces, but you can always modify the selection later on once we drop down the Fully extrude sop. Okay. Okay, very nice. Now we have selected all the faces. Drop down the poly extrude. Okay, here it is. And now if you increase the distance, you will see how the faces here or the primitives move inwards. Okay, that's exactly what we're looking for, but just select here individual elements. That works better in this case. Okay, if you have to modify your selection, just use this little arrow here, click on it and you can select again the faces you want. Okay, just hit enter again to confirm your selection. And now if we take a look down here, you will see that the VDB is looking much better. So we will have a proper collision in our flip simulation. Okay, jump back and up and in the simulation, let's take a look. It's just hide the boat to see the collision representation and 
move to frame 3 for example, let it calculate and we will see now if we have a better collision. That looks much better here, even this surface here is working, so that's exactly what we are looking for and what we need for a detailed collision with our ocean. So there's one more thing we're going to take a look at. The ocean is emitting some points on top of our boat. That's also not what we're looking for. So we need to do another little trick here. Jump back inside our boat and let's see where it's coming from. So here's our follow object which is the object which gets fed into the ocean source. So let's take a look in our guided ocean layer initial and you will see here here is our merge follow and if we jump down to our wave tank you will see that here is a problem. As the boat has its top faces here but the ocean is higher it will emit on top of our boat. So towards this we will again extrude some faces, jump back inside your boat, let's move it down and connect it here also to the moving object so that makes sure that the ocean is tracking along. So connect it after the convert so we can again extrude some nodes here. Okay, that's fine. So select the convert and let's again just select the top faces in this case. Again, you can modify them later on if you're missing some faces. No problem. Just do a rough selection here. Okay, that looks good. Okay, drop down another poly extrude. Put it out of the stream and in, into our new stream here. And let's just extrude it upwards, let's say two. I mean it's just for the ocean source so it doesn't matter how it looks like. That's working fine and it's also moving. So it will basically update the position of our boat and track along. That's good. Let's take a look in the guided ocean layer initial again. And now these particles here are gone. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so we're nearly done with our preparations. So now you can see that the wave tank takes a few seconds to calculate. If we lower the particle separation, it will take even longer. The preset here is already with a file cache node. So depending on your machine specs, the memory and so on, it might be useful to cache out the wave tank before feeding it into the simulation. In my test, the high res flip simulation we will do in the next clip took about 9 to 10 gigabyte of memory. So if you have 16 or more, you should be fine. If you have 8, perhaps it might be better to cache out the wave tank with this node here and read it back in as we already did it with the points of our boat. One more thing we're going to take a look at here is the resolution. At the moment it's 1.5. I mean it's good for doing some tests. I would always recommend doing flipbooks to find the right values for your simulation with a lower particle separation and in the end increase it when sending it to the farm or calculating it locally on your machine overnight. But for the high res flip simulation we will use 0.06. You can already see that it takes a bit long and we have more points. Okay, that's fine. We prepared the collision objects for the high res flip simulation and in the next clip we will start tweaking some values here on the flip solver to adjust the look of our simulation and then we are already ready to cache it out. See you in the next clip.